Welcome to the JLC Podcast, presented by the Jorgensen Learning Center. Change the conversation, change the results. Here's Dr. Ray Jorgensen. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, Ray Jorgensen at JLC, and uh, we work on conversational leadership. This is an in-learning series, and I have two really unique and incredibly impactful human beings to chat with us today. And they're going to talk about um, something called Team of Two. And that is how a leader can effectively interact with their executive assistant. And uh, I think you'll be very taken with how they fun function together as a Team of Two. They're going to introduce one another. So first, this is Ray Stiff and he's going to introduce uh, Terry Moulton. So, Ray, it's all yours. Well, thank you, sir. Um, thank you for the opportunity, and uh, it's a privilege to be with you all today. Um, the other gentleman down below, screen left of me, is uh, Rear Admiral uh, Terry Moulton. He was uh, recently retired of the, is the Deputy Surgeon General of the United States Navy. Um, great man and mentor of mine, and I, I learned a lot from, and I, I believe that he'll be able to share some impactful um, things with y'all today that may be able to help you in uh, in your journeys. So, sir. All right. Well, thank you. And uh, Ray, good to be uh, with you guys. Uh, I'd like to also introduce Captain Ray Stiff, Medical Service Corps, uh, who was my executive assistant uh, a few years ago uh, at the Bureau of Medicine and Surgery. And we were really a team of two and partners in what was going on at the Bureau of Medicine and Surgery and the military health systems. Uh, he's currently down in uh, Millington, Tennessee as the head assignments officer for Navy Medicine, and that's responsible for supporting the organization and ensuring we have a distribution of officers across the system. Uh, he was a great partner, and uh, we, we were a, a great team, so a team of two conversations uh, right in our wheelhouse. And that's great. Thank you both for being with us, and I think the people that will listen to this will learn so much from the two of you. So um, either one of you can start, but when I introduced that idea of team of two, uh, what was the first memory that you have about that? What happened? Because I had you both in the room and we started talking about what it meant to be a team of two. What was some of your first memories and first remembrances of those times? And Ray, you can start if you like. Yeah, um, even when we were talking about, you know, getting together and doing this, I think one of the, the first things that come to mind with, with this was trust. Mm. Um, any type of relationship that you have, I, I think there's got to be a, a, a foundation on trust, and whether that's a personal or a professional relationship. And with Admiral Moulton, um, that went both ways, I believe, with he and I. Um, but first and foremost is he, he brought me in and uh, entrusted me to be a confidant and provide information to him and allowed me and empowered me, I would say, to even be able to, to share uh, my thoughts and, and ideas on particular issues. Um, without having that, it would have made it much more challenging to be able to move forward and really build upon – um, that relationship that I think that we we shared, and in essence, that you know helped not only us personally, um, but it really helped move the organization forward. So that was the, one of the first things that came to mind with me. That's excellent. Thank you, Terry. How about you? Yeah, I think early on uh, when we were getting together, trying to figure that you know team of two concept uh, out, uh, you know, I found myself trying to take some notes. Right. So in between our meetings. What did we need to do in order to, to get in the, in the habit of the team of two? And so I think that sort of brings back uh, my memories early on. And I would echo Ray's trust, right? I mean, uh, man, we were uh, tied at the hip uh, and uh, trusted each other immensely. So I, I think uh, that's a good point. I think the sense of trust and trustworthiness really is powerful. The other thing I noticed is once we started to go down this road together, the level of vulnerability you had with each other was incredible. You oh, were very willing to admit what was going on. What's, what are you thinking, Terry? Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, Ray was my confidant. I mean, I, 
I told him everything I was thinking and uh, how I was feeling. Mm. And he was very good at either uh, settling me down or uh, building my confidence up. So that's you know, a great part of being a, a team. I remember you both uh, smiling at me, if not laughing outward, uh, whenever I said, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? Yeah. What are you learning? I kind of stayed on that place. And you guys began to do that to each other. I think at first uh, with great humor, and then it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. Ray, what are you thinking? No, I, <laughs> there you go. So you said it right there. Um, no, I think that's spot on. And I, and I think that because of the vulnerability that you, just, that you discuss and on the trust that we just alluded to, that open the door to helping us um, start to anticipate what the other one was thinking, which actually builds upon the team of two concept. Um, not that we had to get, we didn't want to get ahead of our skis, but being able to have that um, forthright conversation without having to beat around the bushes and try to understand where we were wanting to go together. And, you know, and I completely understood that my role was a support role. Um, but being as a support role, again, we're back with him empowering me to be able to speak freely. I think it, it provided that chance to allow me to kind of push him a little bit when he may have been a little reluctant to do so. And then he also, you know, put the reins on me when maybe I was moving a little too fast. Um, but, you know, you know you're always, you always got some what you're thinking, and it may just have some time to self-reflect on – both what we were doing individually, but also how we were working together as a team for the common good of the organization. Uh, there was never a question that when you spoke, Ray, you were speaking on behalf of the Deputy Surgeon General. It was very clear. The communication that you constructed was really beautiful. There's a, a piece here about how you both added value to the system. So uh, I can't celebrate enough how well you work together. And this video, this podcast, um, is really about inviting others to develop this kind of practice. So this next question, and I didn't, I really would like it to be right off the cuff, right off the top of mind, whatever you think of. If you were talking to um, a captain who is at an activity and is the commanding officer and wanted to develop a team of two, what is the number one first piece of advice that you would give that person? What would you say to the commanding officer at Pensacola, for example, if they said, tell me what you two did, because I recognize this team of two concept is incredibly powerful. What is one piece of advice you would give me in order to effectively develop my team of two? Terry, why don't you start this time? What's the number one thing that came to mind? Well, uh, Probably the number one thing for me was um, um, none of us is smart as all of us. Mm. And so Ray and I developed this great relationship so that I could tell him, uh, here's what I'm thinking, right? Not go do, go fetch and come back. This was, this is what I'm thinking. So if I'm not here, carry on. And uh, Ray was really, really good at that. And that's what we were just talking about a, a second ago. Yeah, so I watched you guys, and I provoked you slightly, but you already were doing it. What are the operating principles that you needed to share with each other so that if somebody called in, Ray would know. Is oh, this yeah. I need to bring right through the, to the door to the boss? Or if somebody was coming in, this, I really watched Ray do this so well. Somebody wanted to give you information as DSG, and Ray said, tell me what kind of information you want to share and let's talk about how you're going to give that to the boss. And are you here to argue for your point, litigate your point, or do you just want to bring information to the boss? Ray, you did that in a magnificent way. And I watched it as, as it unfolded over our time together. I had the privilege, ladies and gentlemen, of playing the role of coach uh, for both these fine men, and they allowed me to do that. Same, the same sense of Trust and trustworthiness lived among the three of us from time to time. Ray, what's the number one piece of advice you would give to a, a commanding officer that's trying to build a very powerful team of two? I, it's hard to say put anything ahead of everything else, but 
I think having that open communication where the, is the Emerald was talking about, where you can have that understanding of what you're thinking, how you're going to be able to move forward. Um, we talked a lot about um, having that, that feedback loop. So mm -hmm. we knew what was happening at the end of the day. So we really understood not just what we thought we were hearing, but what we really heard and being able to, to be able to put that into action. So, um, you know, that was one of the things that he and I even chatted about a lot. It was, you know, one of the major operating principles was that whole uh, end of day, end of week recap stuff. So we could really um, ensure that we had a good understanding of where they were, where we were, what our committed actions were. What we, how we need to move forward because we don't want to be paralyzed by um, issues, but be able to try to figure out how we can, how we can move forward. That's really, really good. There's a sense that you two developed and you, you that around getting feedback. Like we have an idea. The boss has an idea. Let me see how that idea lands on you. You even use that language, which was magnificent and you practice the disciplines and you, you've heard me say this a million times that, the quality of your leadership is revealed in the quality of your conversations. You guys had high quality conversations together and that went outbound from where you were. That's really good, Ray. What are you thinking, Terry? Yeah, I was sort of visualizing uh, some of our meetings and uh, key words came into, into play with us and we use them a lot. And I think that's part of our learning. And one of them was, what are we learning? Mm -hmm. uh, and the other one was committed actions. What are the committed actions uh, from the team? And so Ray was really good at uh, in being in the meetings, the senior level meetings that, that uh, took part. And we would take notes, both of us. And uh, what, did they, what did our senior leaders say they were committed to? And uh, then we would follow up. We'd make, make uh, lists. Uh, we would often use that in our weekly communication out to the regional commanders. and and deputy chiefs, right? Here's what we said we were gonna do, so let's do it. You know, what are we learning? What's the gap? What do we need to adjust uh, to go do something differently? That's really, really, that really, really great really. teamwork in that respect. So, so, so smart, very good. Ray, what are you thinking right now about what Terry said? Uh, amen, I mean, it, it was, it was, uh, it was a, he was just a phenomenal leader to follow, you know, support and follow through on in that, but I mean, I, he's not giving himself enough credit as the um, kind of be the impetus behind ensuring that that's how we operated. You know, again, it was, it was my job to provide that support and he was in, extremely empowering. So kind of back to your original question on what are you going to tell that CEO to do at Pensacola or the, the officer at Pensacola is you, you have to trust your folks, find those individuals that you can rely on, but empower them to be able to, give you the support that you need because as the Admiral stated, you know, we're going to be smarter together than we are individually. And I love that collective wisdom is everything. This has been great guys. And, and, and I, I don't want to go away and without asking one final question, I did say, what is the first thing you would tell somebody? And you laid out this idea of anytime you have a meeting and, and this is, we laughed about this extensively. We have a meeting and at the end of the meeting, no one promises anything. Everybody says, are there any questions? Everybody leaves. And you guys never allowed that to happen. Once you got that idea that we're meeting for a reason and every section of the meeting should produce committed actions. You never left that go. That was really an outstanding carry forward that both of you did. So Terry, back to you. Final thoughts now. You're sitting in a room with, with brand new commanding officers or people that are learning to lead activities. What, what is your final thought that you would say to that person moving forward? Well, in the, in our world, we have uh, the, the executive team, the triad mm -hmm. uh, and that triad really needs to be in lockstep together. So a team of two out there, it really becomes a team of three and they, they need to be tied at the hip. If the commanding officer says, I want to go do that, those other two people are to go execute it. Uh -huh. They're not to question what, what uh, this commanding officer wants out in public. They could do that in private. But once the CO makes that determination that's what he wants to do, those other two are supposed to execute. And Ray did that for you. And he also queried you. He said, I've heard him say to you, are you sure, boss? 
you sure? That's the way we want to go on this one? Have we thought about this? Have we thought about that? That was magnificent, that, that kind of interaction. Back to you, Ray. What are you thinking? What, what's that final thing you're going to say to that triad or to anybody leading in the activity? Well, I just uh, you almost recap what he just what Admiral just stated, but it was is the having that open dialogue in those private times so that you could have that robust discussion about how we could work so that the uh, the senior leader could then have that information there to make an informed decision. Mm -hmm. um, if if they're not empowering their folks to be honest with them or are they used too big of a hammer so that they don't want to bring stuff forward, that could be ultimately detrimental to both the, the leader and to the organization. So as Admiral stated, I mean, I think that's key. Now, once, once the decision's made, then they got to get lockstep, even if they don't, that wasn't necessarily the path that they wanted to be on. You got to lose smartly. Um, but you know, that's, that's what we can do. And, and that's where the trust comes back into play. Yeah, I love it. So once we come to a conclusion, everybody's had a chance to say what they're thinking. And, one of the great gifts that I think you both gave to people that would come to see you or be in a meeting with you is you created safely dangerous space, space where people could actually bring their thinking forward. And you also help people learn not to try and be right, because if I try and be right, then I get stuck. You know, we're going to make our best decision, and that is our best decision moving forward, given the information that we have. You both did that really, really well. It's a pleasure to serve you. This has been fantastic, gentlemen. Thank you so much for the time. And to those of you listening, I hope you'll tune in again. I hope to bother both these gentlemen again from time to time about learnings that they've had as leaders. They are quintessential leaders. And when uh, Captain Steph functioned as the EA for the Deputy Surgeon General, he was a quintessential leader. He influenced people tremendously. So you don't... That sense of, oh, I'm just the EA. You know, it's not really the way it works. If the EA is deeply connected, trusts and, has, and is trustworthy, incredible things can happen in a command. Thank you both for your time, gentlemen. I appreciate you very, very much. Take care. The Jorgensen Learning Center provides leaders with a practical framework to use conversation as a discipline to create a high-performance environment where people are energized to share, contribute and succeed together. To learn more, visit gojlc.com.